Hello. No? Okay. Don't sing this time. You and that booty, it's turning into you and that booty. What's up, guys? Shit in the Fridge, season two, volume dose, episode trois. Guys, you know there's something that I know, that you know, that I know, that you know, and that is that everyone has a jar of funk, nasty, delicious, grown-up struggle meal pasta sauce in their pantry. Now, I know I said pantry and not fridge, but that's fine. Because what we're going to do today is we're going to take this jar of Prego and turn it into Fago. Because it's good. No? Okay. We're going to make this good. <laughs> Since we're gonna make this sauce everything that we want it to be using stuff that you have around your house, like I said, most people have a jar of sauce somewhere in their pantry, maybe underneath the you know table or you know in someone's bedroom there's a jar of sauce you forgot about. So first things up, we're gonna make some pasta. Eggs, flour, oil, salt, let's go. So we made that pasta, pasta's in the fridge. It's gotta rest for 30 minutes before we actually turn it into pasta. So right now it's just dew. Like we got pasta dew in the fridge. Now let's make this sauce. We're gonna take this basic jar of MSG goodness and we're gonna add some other things that are in our pantry and in our fridge. So we've got some tomatoes, shallots, garlic, uh, fire roasted canned tomatoes. We're gonna take some of this bacon jam. Uh, so this was actually- Chef, you can't use that, that's not in the store. What do you mean I can't use it? No, no one has that. Well, I have it, so we're gonna use it because it's in my fridge, because there's all kinds of shit that's in your fridge that I don't have. You might have bacon in your fridge, you might have pancetta, you might have guanciale, you might have some sort of other meat byproduct or meat or vegan stuff. Use what you have. Fridge. There's shit in it. Use it. So bacon jam, red cayenne pepper, a little bit of extra Italian seasoning because we're gonna spice it up. Uh, you know what? Let's get in the fridge and see if there's anything else in there we can use. Mm, there's a lot of stuff in my fridge. God, you guys are a bunch of primary school children. Where are these snacks? Is that a juice box? Got there. Got some uh, heavy cream, a little bit of cheese. Looks like Parmiano Reggianes. So, y'all ready? Time to make the sauce. Remember, jar, stuff, delicious. First and first mostly is what we have here. We have a shallote. So we're gonna take that shallot. All y'all know out there what them alliums do? Yeah, we about to cry. About to cry, cause we still in quarantine. Cause everybody out here just get rona. Couple cloves of garlic. Now, me personally, I'm more of a fan of like, instead of a couple, you know, like 10, maybe 15. But also, I, I don't know. I. I I tend to have a mask on all the time, so I'm pretty approachable, just suffering inside my mask for myself. So now that we've got that shimmer, we're gonna get these shallots and uh, garlic into the pan. Now, if you don't know the difference between an onion and a shallot, you should probably check out the prep list. That is the Culinary Gang podcast coming to you with all kinds of different, you know, just dropping knowledge bombs, dropping them MSG, uh, what, 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 what is MSG? Where did it come from? Why are some people like, I'm allergic to it? You know, onions versus shallots. Which one's better to use? When should I use it? I don't know, meatloaf. Why is it a loaf of meat? Why is it a loaf of meat? Why do you like it so much? Why do you like it so much? You know, that really hard to digest that's really hard to digest why people like it. Prep list. Check it out on all of those wonderful places that you can listen to podcasts. All right, so we hear that sizzle. Y'all ready? I'm gonna get my mic real close so that we can just mm. Once again, guys, you probably don't have shouts at home. You guys are probably like, Christian, you have the most random stuff that nobody else has in their fridge and in their pantry. I like shouts. I like fancy things. This. We're gonna get a nice sear, fizzle, a little bit of color. Wait till those uh, shouts start to become translucent. 
start to smell all that flavor coming out of that pan, that waft. Let's cut up a little bit of uh, tomato. Generally when you get pasta sauce out of the stove, that pasta sauce is super, 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 super sweet. Unless it says no added sugar, that shit's sweet. And so what we wanna do is add a little natural acidity by using fresh tomatoes. We also are gonna use a can of fire roasted tomatoes for a little more depth of flavor. So we got a little bit of color coming on this here garlic and shallot. Now remember, garlic, garlic burns. And when garlic burns, it ain't good. Watch your pan. So we've got a little bit of color. We're gonna add in those uh, fresh sliced tomatoes. We're also gonna go ahead and add some of that bacon jam to the pan to let it start to heat up and cook down. Eight ounce container here. I'm gonna take about two ounces of this eight ounce container of bacon jam and just plibbity plop, slibbity slop, smack dab doobity dop. That's starting to look all nice and pretty. It's getting all fragrant in here. Everybody behind the scenes is just, you know, salivating. We're gonna let some of that fat render down before we add our next stizzy step. So we've got a little bit of powdered red cayenne pepper in there. We're also going to add a little bit of chili flake. Now that's a lot. Just a little bit. We also have Italian seasoning. We're gonna add some Italian seasoning. We're just jazzing up all of the spices. We've got our tomatoes. We're gonna add our fire roasted tomatoes. Yes, it's out of a can. Using canned products is nothing to be laughed at. No scoffing out there, guys. Canned products are good. And by good, I mean, that's what you have in your pantry. Canned stuff is delish, cause it's Rona and I ain't got no guard. Straight into the sizzity sauce. Get a little bit of that stickity stick stick at the bottom of your pan, especially if you're using stainless. That's all right. You put that can of fire roasted tomatoes inside that pan, it will deglaze the bottom of that pan for you, cause acid. Er. So we're gonna go ahead and taste this. Get a little bit of that there. Uh, uh, uh. Turn around, we're gonna get a little bit of that spibbity salt. Add some salt to the flame. Ooh. Now, why did I add so much salt? Because what did I say earlier, y'all? This is sugar and tomatoes. Mmm. Hear that pop? That's the seal of freshness and not botulism. We're about three steps away from just throwing this down on a simmer and calling it a day on the sauce and returning to a pasta time, a better time. So one more time, we're gonna taste all of our sauce. Woo! We added chili flake, we added red cayenne pepper. So inevitably it's going to get really, really, really spicy. A little bit of cream, soften it up, tame some of that spice down and just bring that sauce together. A little bit of finish on the end. Alrighty then, so we've got sauce simmering on the back burner over here. It's time to actually roll out our pasta. So we've got this lovely, lovely old world hand crank pasta machine. You cannot make the perfect pasta without this machine. I mean, literally, we're gonna roll out our dough, we're gonna feed it through. It's just gonna continue to lay it out and get it flat and just press it together. All that gluten's been developing in the fridge. You cannot make pasta without a pasta machine, all right? So this is- Jeff, Jeff we're gonna have to use something similar. No one's gonna have that pasta machine. What? What would you like me to use, Kyle? I don't know. You're the chef. <laughs> We're gonna roll it out with a rolling pin. Before anyone else says anything to me though, if you don't have a rolling pin at home, grab a bottle of wine. Bottle of wine, anyone? Bottle of wine? You don't have a rolling pin? You don't have a fancy old world pasta maker? Grab a bottle of wine. Empty said bottle of wine. Cry. Chuck it at Kyle if it doesn't break, use it to make your pasta. So, that's still got wine in it, so we're gonna use this instead. We'll just throw that at Kyle later. 
The pasta is rolled, pasta is cut. I rolled mine out to about like a really thin papardelle. We're gonna put it in the water, then get it inside of the sauce, show that sauce who's boss, get it on the plate, let's go. So I didn't have a pasta hanger, and it's a struggle, so bear with me. Remember guys, struggle. You ain't got pasta tree, you could just get a hanger you use to hang up your drawers after they come out of the wash machine, the wash machine, and then just hang your pasta up individually. What we're gonna do, like I said, get it all inside of this here poked and straight in get that minute and 30 rolling now we're gonna grab our strainer we got our little bit of strainer now normally you could do like a normal person and take your strainer and then go put it over in the water but i want you guys to see me struggle now remember we talked about heavy cream earlier i decided because you know this is my pasta this is what i want to do it's my prerogative I'm not gonna put that touch of heavy cream in there. That heavy cream is if you wanna dial down some of that heat. I decided not to use it last minute. You can do the same thing. So now, our pasta's ready, gotta dry it off a little bit. Straight into that there skillet. And then we're going to just work some of that fresh sauce all around this pasta. And you wanna keep your pasta from sticking, remember, work it immediately. Straight into the bowl. Look at that. Look at that, look at that. Look at that. Cool. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get some cheese on this, maybe some fresh tomatoes, a little bit more of that chili flake, if you want for spice. Uh, I've got this fresh Parmesan Reggiano here. So just take this, like if you have a cheese grater or maybe a wedge, Struggle. So you got that dry ass Parmesan cornflake BS that's in your fridge or maybe in your cabinet because you don't know whether or not it's supposed to be refrigerated. We're just gonna put that on there now. Yeah, we're just gonna just load that down, get some of that good old, you know, just, mm, mm. I don't know what we call this, but it looks like sawdust. There it is. Next up, a little bit of red chili flake on the garnish. Fresh tomatoes, a little pop of acidity, uh, a touch of sweetness, but then also cut through some of that thick, dank sauce that we made. This looks pretty fire. So let's give it that try with that there old sawdust on top. The you know, thing that Kyle likes to eat the most because he doesn't know what flavor is. Tomatoes. That's what's up. I'm Christian Gill. Shit in the fridge. Stay hungry. Oh, yes. The McTerrific pair. They went together like lamb and tuna fish. Lamb and tuna fish? Maybe you like spaghetti and meatball? You're more comfortable with that analogy? Yes, considering we're in America. I mean, if you don't like spaghetti and meatballs, why don't you get the hell out? Hey, listen, I'll come down there and give you a crew cut, mister. Let's see your clippers. Not my problem. Your father was sick. Stop yelling at me! Ah! Ha, ha, ha.